Oh, hello, you spectacular child of God. Welcome to Bible Bread Time. It's season five, and this is episode 245. If this is your first time listening to Bible Bedtime, and every episode is somebody's first time, then let me introduce myself. My name is Dana, and I'm your host. How this podcast works is I read a full chapter of the Bible in a way that will help you sleep in heavenly peace. And in this season five, we are first reading through the fifth book of the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. Once we finish with Deuteronomy, in just a few more episodes, we will begin reading the fifth book of the New Testament, which is Acts. In each episode, After I finish reading the chapter, I then go on to read a full chapter from the Bible, from the book of Psalms. And then we finish with the Lord's Prayer. Now, it's my intention through this podcast to bless you with the reading of God's Word. And so many of you have reached out to me through Facebook and offered encouragement or you've just said hello and thank you so much. You know, podcasts are just a one-way communication and I sometimes feel like I'm whispering into the void. So getting feedback from listeners really makes my day. If you would like to share your experiences, or ask for a prayer, or just say hello, please do reach out through the Bible Bedtime Facebook page. I read and respond to every comment, and you can also reach out to me by email at Bible Bedtime Podcast at gmail.com Now, it is time for you to settle down and get ready to fall asleep. Bible bedtime is such a good habit for you to get into because doing a routine helps your body recognize that it is time to settle down. If you've ever found yourself with your mind and body still going long after you know you need to be asleep, then you know how important it is to trigger your body and your mind and to tell them that it's time to end the day. That there's nothing else you need to do other than relax and accept the blessing of sleep. It is a time when we can renew our hearts, our brains, and our bodies our muscles repair themselves. All of those thoughts racing through your brain all day reorganize themselves while you sleep, which is why sleep is so important. So if you find that your mind wants to wander, then think about things. Just imagine that you are writing down those thoughts and ideas 
on a very fine piece of paper. And then I want you to imagine that you place that piece of paper in a beautiful blue stream of water. It's going through the mountains, emptying into the sea. And every time you have a thought, imagine writing it down, dropping it into the stream to watch it be absorbed into water and be carried away. Sometimes you might have the same thought over and over, and that's okay. And just write it down over and over and send it on its way. Now, if you are awake at the end of Bible bedtime, that's okay. That happens. We don't all just fall asleep on a regular schedule. You can... Maybe reflect on passages that had particular meaning to you, or talk to God in your mind for a little while, or maybe listen to another episode, or listen to the same episode over. Don't expect that falling asleep is going to feel the same every day, because it won't. But what is the same on every Bible bedtime podcast is that we take three deep breaths. So please join me now in doing that. One, two, went out and spoke these words to all Israel. I am now a hundred and twenty years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will also cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said, and the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their forefathers to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the ark 
of the covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Then Moses commanded them at the end of every seven years, in the year for canceling debts, during the feast of the tabernacles, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose. And you shall read this law before them in their hearing. Assemble the people, men, women, and children, and the aliens living in your towns, so they can listen and learn to fear the Lord your God and follow carefully all the words of this law. Their children who do not know this law must hear it and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. The Lord said to Moses, Now the day of your death is near. Call Joshua and present yourselves at the tent of meeting where I will commission him. So Moses and Joshua came and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. Then the Lord appeared at the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the cloud stood over the entrance to the tent. And the Lord said to Moses, You are going to rest with your fathers, and these people will soon prostitute themselves to the foreign gods of the land they are entering. They will forsake me and break the covenant I made with them. On that day, I will become angry with them and forsake them. I will hide my face from them and they will be destroyed. Many disasters and difficulties will come upon them. And on that day, they will ask, Have not these disasters come upon us because our God is not with us? And I will certainly hide my face on that day because of all their wickedness in turning to other gods. Now, write down for yourselves this song and teach it to the Israelites and have them sing it so that it may be a witness for me against them. When I have brought them into the land flowing with milk, and honey, the land I promised on oath to their forefathers. And when they eat their fill and thrive, they will turn to other gods and worship them, rejecting me and breaking my covenant. And when many disasters and difficulties come upon them. This song will testify against them because it will not be forgot by their descendants. I know what they are disposed to do. Even before I bring them into the land I promised them on oath, so Moses wrote down this song that day and taught it to the Israelites. The Lord gave this command to Joshua son of Nun, 
be strong and courageous, for you will bring the Israelites into the land I promised them on oath, and I myself will be with you. After Moses finished writing in a book, the words of this law from beginning to end, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. There it will remain as a witness against you. For I know how rebellious and stiff-necked you are. If you have been rebellious against the Lord while I am still alive and with you, how much more will you rebel after I die? Assemble before me all the elders of your tribes and all your officials so that I can speak these words in their hearing and call heaven and earth to testify against them. For I know that after my death you are sure to become utterly corrupt and to turn from the way I have commanded you. In days to come, disaster will fall upon you because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord and provoke him to anger by what your hands have made. is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to see him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle I will sacrifice with shouts of joy I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. In your face, O Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away 
in anger, you have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. Oh God, my Savior, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses will rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait. kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. And in closing, the words of Psalm 2014, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord my rock, and my redeemer. Now, it's time for you to fall asleep and sleep well. Sweet dreams. Good night.